In this video, I'm going to talk about purpose-specific paint sets and why they can be a blessing and why they can really sort of put you down. When you go buy paint, there's usually um, a set of paints from a lot of different brands that are put together for a specific purpose. I've got an example here, which is from Vallejo. It's called Orcs and Goblins. And it's a set of different paints put together by Mr. Giraldes. Um, he's pretty good at painting minis. He's picked out a bunch of different paints and a little guide of how to paint orc and goblins using these paints. A lot of different brands make tons of different of these. There's painting elf flesh, there's painting dwarf flesh, there's painting non-metallic metal, there's painting fiery demons, all these different sets. The great thing about these sort of sets of paint um, is that someone has been thinking for you. Something that I've realized this sort of last uh, one and a half years that I've been painting miniatures is that uh, certain paints go really well together with others. I think that's something that makes a really good sort of miniature painter stand out is knowing, you know, if I use this green first and then I use this specific green, this will be the result. And you can only sort of figure that out by trying all these different paints and you know where to go and should the highlights be warmer and should the shadows be colder and you know this kind of stuff and this fellow Mr. Giraldes has figured that out because he's really good at painting miniatures so the set that he has put together these different tones they work really nicely together so if you use this step-by-step -step guide you'll end up with pretty nice gradients and the highlights will like really pop and they'll be warm and nice and the shadows they'll be a bit cooler and everything looks great. And this goes for all the sets. I've got this one here from Scale 75 which is called uh, a paint set. Uh, I think Nunumumumum stands for non-metallic metal. Uh, you can google that if you're not already familiar what it is but it's you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, it's basically trying to paint things so that they look like they're made out of metal without using uh, metallic paints. And these have got a step-by-step -step guide as well. It's just really uh, not very well translated, to be honest. Um, but same thing here, someone's already done the thinking for you. So if you follow their process, it's a really easy way to start out trying non-metallic metal because you don't have to figure out like, what sh color should I be using next? What should I be using for the highlights? What should I be using for the shades? You just follow this. Now, all these things are great, um, but I have a really big downside to this as well. And that's when you do it for the first time, um, and I'm talking about painting miniatures, yeah. You end up with a really nice result. Probably something that you maybe, you know, you might never have ended up with that nicer result before if you're new to painting. Because the shade, the, the, you know, everything matches up perfectly and everything looks great. If you use this and paint an orc like Mr. Giraldes told you to, then you will end up with Mr. Giraldes' orc. And especially if you're new to painting, that can be something that's pretty difficult to get out of. So what am I trying to say here? Well, that's exactly what I did. Um, I bought this set of paints uh, basically because I was, I knew I was going to paint orcs and I was in a bit of a hurry. I was with my son at the local uh, friendly game store and I was like, I'm, I'll, just, I'll just pick this and I'll use it to paint my orcs. And I painted a test model, an old hammer orc, and I sort of changed it a little bit because I had this idea, uh, by the way, if you haven't watched how I now paint my orc skin, uh, it's up here somewhere. But I already had an idea that I wanted sort of some colder blue tones to my orc. I also saw some other people paint, uh, you know, where the sort of, where the skin stretches a little bit, it sort of, it's a bit brownish and, you know, more sort of humanly skin toned. And so I tried to paint 
my miniature that way using these paints. Sort of also watching the step-by-step -step guide. And when I was done, I was sort of like, well, this doesn't really look like my orc. It doesn't look like what I had in mind. And so I gave it a lot of thought and I painted another one. And I thought I really had drastically sort of changed the recipe. But these were the paints that were sort of in front of me. And I was like, I'll just try a little bit of this. And I'll just, and you know, even though I thought I was going to paint a radically different looking orc and constantly trying to tell myself that I should be using more blue or whatever, they ended up looking pretty much the same. And so I went for a walk and really thought about things of, you know, how do I really want my green skin to look like? And I sat down and I looked at the miniature and I thought, you're not right. No, I'm just kidding. I just added that for theatrical uh, benefits. But in essence, that's what I did. And I really had to put an effort in to paint my own green skin on my next miniature. Um, because this was so stuck in my head. You'll see if you watch the video where I paint, paint green skins, most of the green that I use comes out of this set. But I've added other paints and I'm using them in a different sort of, a different manner. But it took a lot of effort to step away from this. And in the end, you know, this is what my actual green skins look like, which is uh, quite different from the color set that I was so stuck to. Like when you watch a tutorial, of someone paint, I guess it depends on who they are, but most people, they try and inspire and just so, show sort of techniques and they can explain why they've used a certain paint. Like I use this because I want warmer highlights and so forth. With these, you're pretty much just stuck with the sort of, this is the way it's supposed to be because you don't have an alternative. It's not like you can sort of, well, buy these as well if you want a dark orc or buy these as well if you want sort of yellow uh, non-metallic metal. It doesn't say, it just says exactly how to use these paints. You can learn a lot. Uh, you get a nice sort of set of paints that will work perfectly together, but you will also just end up with what someone else thinks that your sort of uh, paint job is going to look like, whether it be sort of orc and goblin skin or some other skin, non-metallic metal, whatever they're made out of. And so what have I been doing? Well, the thing is with this uh, non-metallic metal paint set, when I bought this, the reason why I bought it was actually that I bought it because of the paints that were inside of it. Um, I've never, never tried scale 75 paints before. I wanted to try their white. I really wanted to try um, the, the blues that were in here and also the sort of black which is almost a sort of blue-black. That's when I was going through all these different paint sets that were in the store, that was what I was looking at. I was looking at what colors were in there for, you know, that would suit me. And I haven't been trying to paint non-metallic metal with it. And why am I telling you this? Well, basically because I don't want you to be out there painting whatever it is you're painting and not really be happy with it. But the result turns out awesome because all the shades were right. You know, you can be inspired and you can use it as a different way of paint, you know, buying paints. Right? I bought all these blues because I wanted to have these blues. Um, but have in mind that you don't have to actually follow it and try and break free of it. If you're painting an entire army of green skins and you're going, why, why have I got yellow ink on all the veins? I don't like yellow ink. Just try something different and try and figure out what's in here that is uh, useful for you to learn and maybe step away from some of it. But I'm really interested in how you perceive these sort of uh, paint sets, color sets, and how you use them. I realize that this is also, it depends on every individual's creative process. I'm kind of picky with the point that I want my miniatures to be mine and I have ideas in my head of, over what you know skin should look like or other things like that. 
And so these things kind of stress me out because they're pulling me away from my own creative process. Um, but it would be nice to hear how you perceive them. You might find them only just a blessing because it's really nice if someone told you just this is how to get an awesome skin tone and you agree and that's how you use it. Um, but that was my five cents about these things. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it's a bit random. And, uh, you know, please like and subscribe and all these things. Bye.